Fabulous feminine ladies, there are eight things you should never say to your man. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. Eight things you never say to your man. Number one, you never question his manhood. Don't ask him, are you even a man? I know sometimes when you're in an argument, you can feel you're getting very upset. And sometimes men might say things that get under your skin. Sometimes men, they can be a little insensitive. Sometimes they can lack poor communication. And in that, they might say things that get you very upset, very agitated. In that moment, you have to try your best to refrain from saying things like, are you even a man? A real man doesn't act this way. A real man doesn't do this. When you say those kind of things, that is very disrespectful. And men, unlike women, while we crave love, we want to feel loved and cared for, men value respect. And when you question their manhood, you question whether or not they're even a man, you are challenging his manhood. Men don't know how to respond to that. Men begin to see you differently when you question whether or not they're a man. Now, in the moment, in your opinion, in your eyes, they might be displaying behavior that is less than manly. They might be displaying behavior that is more childlike. But as a feminine woman, and as a woman who wants to see issues resolved and not exacerbate issues, you do not want to put a man on the defensive by questioning his manhood in the moment. So number one, do not say things like, are you even a man? A real man is not going to act like that. Because when you do that, you're putting him on the defensive and you're going to get the opposite response of what you actually want. Number one. Number two, you want to, and this more so is not about what you say, but it's how you say it. Check your tone. As women, we have the ability to cut men down to the lowest common denominator. Our tongues can be very sharp. Men can have sharp tongues too. However, women, I think there's something in us that causes us to be able to shred people to pieces without even trying for some of us, especially when it comes to the people who are closest to us, like our husbands, like our fiancés, like our boyfriends. When we speak to them, we have to be mindful to not use a tone that we would have with more so children. When it comes to having, you know, a conversation with your man or something that you want to get off of your mind, something you are concerned about, you don't want to come to him once again with a defensive, loud tone. Because for men, they respond to respect. So even though he might have did or said something wrong to you and you didn't like the way he said it, you didn't like, you know, whatever it was you have to still check your tone because no matter what you're saying, if you come to that man hollering and screaming and neck popping and acting crazy, everything you say is going to go over his head and he's no longer going to hear what you're saying. He only hears how you're saying it. He's looking out for the tone of respect. This is something that I have learned the hard way over my almost 19 years of being married. Um, for a long time, my automatic go-to was to holler and scream and do all those extra things thinking that I'm going to get the attention of my husband while I was actually doing the opposite. The more I yelled, the more I screamed, the more I got highly upset, the more he got defensive and the more he tuned me out. Am I saying I'm completely perfect until this day? Absolutely not. And I don't think any of us will be perfect in this area. But the goal is to have less circumstances where you find yourself exploding and being looked at as that crazy woman and more so as the woman who is speaking more logically, more level-headed, and you allow the other person, in this case your man, to truly understand or at least appear to understand where you're coming from and let him think about the era of his way. You see, when we speak in a disrespectful tone, when we get all irate, when we get all upset, we are giving men the opportunity to look at us as just this other overly emotional, crazy woman. It's always the man's fault. 
I'm always doing something. So you're never the problem. You see, when you speak very loudly and you're yelling and acting crazy, you're giving men the go ahead to place blame on you and they might be in the wrong. And a lot of times in relationships, it's not about who's wrong or right. You just want to get the issues resolved. But in doing that, it would be helpful as women if we didn't make ourselves look like the villain by how we speak to our men. You have to think men are more logical and men are more prideful. Absolutely, they are. Because of that whole respect thing and they need to have their ego stroke. And I understand that some women listen to this, you might be wondering, why does it take all that? Why do I have to stroke a man's ego, all this respect? Why I got to watch how I talk? Well, you know what? Or how I speak. I didn't create the rules and I didn't create the makeup of man. I just figured out how they operate and I know how to operate within that realm. As a married woman, I had to learn that my husband, that a man wants respect. And as a woman, if you want to have a relatively healthy relationship, not a perfect relationship, but if you want to have a healthy relationship, you're going to have to learn how to speak to your man with a tone of respect. Because when you start yelling and acting crazy, that's when they tune out and get defensive. That's when they start talking to you like you're just some woman on the street. They're going to talk to you like you some girl that's coming at them and they don't want to be bothered with you. So as a woman, the number two point, the number two way you never want to speak to your man is by using a tone of disrespect. You don't want to come to him yelling and hollering and screaming. No matter what the situation is, if it's something between you two, you do not want to present your concerns by automatically yelling and say, why did you do this? Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Because a man will tune you out and you will make the situation worse. Number two. Number three. You do not want to make generalized statements like all men are trash or all men are this all men are that when you're speaking to your man. When you make these vague or general statements like, you know, these men today are this, these men today are that, in a way, it's like you're lumping your man into the same category as these other men, especially when you say things like that in the heat of an argument. See, men, we sometimes, we think men aren't that smart and sometimes we think that men don't really have that emotional awareness. And while they might not have it to the level that we do, they do have it. So I say that to say that a man can pick up on the fact that you might be saying degrading things in a slick way. So if you say things like, let's say your man forgot to do something that day. He forgot to pick up something from the store. Or he forgot to take out the trash or whatever. And you make a statement like these men today don't want to do nothing but sit on the couch. They won't even take out the trash. Well, your man is going to put two and two together and understand that you're putting him in that category because he slipped up in this area. What you don't want to do is use passive aggressive behavior. And I know and I can hear some women saying, well, men do that too. Men do these kind of things. On this channel, I speak to women. I am not saying that men are blameless. They are absolutely not. But as women, on our part, as far as being accountable for our actions, it is important that we understand that trying to use generalized statements like all men are garbage, all men are this, all men are that in regards to our men, that is highly disrespectful and it sets the tone that you really don't value them as a man and in essence, you're saying that you're with someone who you think is very stupid. And when it comes to that, you have to ask yourself, why would you be with someone who's stupid? If he's that dumb, why are you with him? So number three, don't make generalized statements like all men are this or all men are that. Because by default, you are putting your man in that same category. And even if you don't mean it that way, he will take it that way. And men, a lot of times, they're not going to say much. They're just going to get quiet and do what they do. But over time, they can begin to build resentment against you. And you do not want that to happen. So try to nip things like that in the bud early or at least try to lessen how often you say things like that. 
Um, I know it's hard because depending on the relationship and longer you're together, it can be very difficult to not do and say little things. But if you want to show your man that you respect him and that you value him as a man, don't lump him in the same category as men who are doing wrong things. All right. So that was number three. Don't make generalized statements. Number four, this is more so for women who are in the dating realm and you're dealing with men who are approaching you. When a man approaches you and you don't like him, he's not your type, he's just not for you. There is a way for you to let a man down without completely destroying his whole being. So you don't want to tell him, oh no, you're not my type. I don't really like men that look like that. You got a bald head. That's disgusting. I don't like you. No. You can simply say, oh, that's sweet, but no, thank you. I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. Or he tries to give you his number or ask you for his number. You can simply say, no, thank you. I appreciate you coming over here though. So there's a way to reject a man without completely destroying him and being mean spirited. Um, that's just a part of being more classy and that's just a part of being more feminine in nature. You want to know how to let people down without being mean, without being brass. You can do things or without being crass, you can say things and you can express your disgust or your disdain for someone without, or your rejection of someone without being mean or nasty. So simply saying, no, thank you. I'm okay. Um, well, he could say something because you know men today know is not enough. He'll say, well, I thought you said you didn't have a boyfriend. I thought you said you weren't married. Well, no, I'm not married and I'm not with anyone at the moment, but I'm enjoying my own company. But I appreciate you coming over here. You have a wonderful day, all right? And leave it at that. You have to use your feminine charm in order to still present yourself as a woman who is classy while not allowing the man to get the false impression that you are into him when you're not into him. And I can hear someone saying right now, if I don't like him, why do I need to go through all of that? Because as a woman, that man wanted to, he approached you. So you want to leave him feeling like, dag, I missed out on that wonderful woman, that wonderful opportunity. She didn't like me. Rather than him walking away thinking he dodged a bullet with you. Because a lot of men, when they approach women and they're just so mean and nasty and this and that, they walk around, they walk away thinking you're more of a, you know, they're thinking you're more of a, you know, that word that I won't say. And you don't want to leave that sour taste in someone's mouth. You know what I mean? As a woman. So learn how to reject men by using your feminine charm. Don't say things like, oh, you're not my type. I don't like this kind of man. I don't like that kind of man. Simply say, no, thank you, but I appreciate you giving me your time. Something to that effect. Number four. Number five, this is for a woman who's in a relationship. You never tell your man, I can do better than you. And when you do something like that, and when you say something like that, you're comparing him to other men. You're giving him the impression that he can never measure up to your standard, especially when you're in a relationship. I'm not saying when you're just dating somebody and you're getting to know and he says something crazy, you know, I have the mindset that you are single until you're married. So if you're just dating, hey, you still don't be mean to the guy, but you don't want to compare him because if he's in that impressing stage, you don't want to say to him like, well, the man I was with used to do this. The guy I was with used to do that. Number one, it's tacky. You don't want yourself, you don't want a man comparing you to other women. So you should not compare them to other men. But when you are married or in a serious relationship and you do that to your man, you say, I can do better than you. You have that man thinking that you're just settling for him until somebody else comes along and you never want to give him that impression and you never want to put that doubt in his mind that you're only with him until somebody else better comes along. So don't say things like I can do better than you, even when you're upset, because we all say a lot of things we don't mean in the heat of the moment. But a lot of times when we're upset, some of the truth comes out, too. So you have to be mindful with your words when you're speaking to your man, especially if you're a married woman. Try not to say things like I can do better than you or what you won't do. Another man will do. That's one of the favorite phrases. Those things. I'm going to be real with you. It might be true. 
But no, under no circumstances do you say that thing to your man because it's very hurtful and you have to think, how would you feel if your man told you, I can do better than you, which you won't do another woman would? You don't want to hear that. So try to refrain from saying that to your man. That is number five. Number six, this is more so a behavior. With a man, refrain from being so needy, so clingy. And you can be this way in your words by constantly nagging at him as to when are you going to do this? When are you going to take me out on a date? When are we going to go here? When are we going to do this? Why haven't you done this? When this? When that? When you nag a man, some women think they can just nag a man into submission. I used to be that way. I used to think that if I nagged my husband enough, he will get on board with what I want to do. Contrary to what public what people believe, you actually repel a man from doing what you want him what from him doing what you want him to do when you're constantly nagging at him. With men, you have to use a little bit of reverse psychology. So whatever it is you want him to do, you have to act like that thing doesn't really matter. You have to act like, hey, it's no big deal or act like you can do it by yourself. So let's use the going to dinner example. Let's say you haven't been on a date with your man in a long time and you really want to go to this dinner place. You bring up the fact that, you know what, on Friday, I'm going to go ahead and go to dinner here, wherever you're going to go. And he'll probably say something like, what do you mean? You're going to, you're going to go to dinner. What, by yourself? Or you're going with somebody? What? No, I just really want to go to this place. And, you know, I've been really craving their stuffed mushrooms. I've been really craving this. So I'm thinking I'm going to go there on Friday. Next thing you know, he's going to be saying, well, okay, yeah, we'll go there, you know. And now you have a date. So it's one of those things with men. And once again, I know somebody's going to be looking like this is some kind of mind games. Why does it take all of that? Men are complex beings. Men are not like us. And if you're going to be with the man, if you're going to be happily married or relatively happily married, you have to know how to communicate to them in a way that gets a response. And neediness and nagging does not get a response. It gets you ignored or passive aggressively talk to. So refrain from needy behavior, number six. Number seven thing you never wanna say to your man, I don't even know why I'm with you. When you say things like that, and I have said this, in the heat of arguments, when I got very frustrated, I have said this, I don't even know why I'm with you. It's only this, every time I turn around, every time this. Over time, when you say things like that, a man will begin to think, you know what? I can't please her. Nothing I do is good enough. He's not going to see that you might have a genuine concern. He's just going to hear, I'm not good enough. Nothing I do is good enough. And this is the reason why as women, we have to learn how to express our concerns about specific issues. Don't make the specific issue the totality of his manhood. What I mean by that is if he slipped up in one area or if he did something wrong, speak on that one thing. Don't say things like, you always do this. You always do that. You never do this. You never do that. Stick to what is happening in the moment. And even if the man in his pride and his ego tries to make it about, so you're saying I'm never this, you're saying I'm never that, redirect the conversation back to the moment. Don't make him feel like you are displeased with him as a person. Let him and make him understand by using soothing words and staying in the moment that you're not saying he's a horrible husband, a horrible man. You're focusing on the one specific incident. Don't generalize his entire manhood or sum him up to be horrible based on one mistake or one issue, all right? So don't say things like, I don't even know why I'm with you because he will begin to question, why is she with me if I'm so horrible? Number seven. And number eight thing you never wanna say to a man, man up, be a man. You're supposed to be a man, be a man. That's something that you would say to your teenage son. That's something you would say to your, you know, your son when he's growing up and he got to go through things. But you don't say that to your husband who might be in his 30s, his 40s, any age, 23. You don't say that to your man. 
Because when you tell him to man up, especially when he's expressing vulnerability to you, when he is in a fragile state, let's say he went through something or he's trying to figure something out and men, while they are masculine, they are strong, they're, they don't have it all figured out all the time. And us in our feminine way, we have to be there to encourage and nurture them and allow them to cry to us, allow them to vent to us, allow them to lean on us. It is not our place to tell them in their most vulnerable time, man up. Why are you crying? Why are you doing this? Man up and take care of your business. Do this, do that. Do, do, do. Next thing you know, you have shifted that dynamic and you're the man. You're acting like a man. You're acting more dominant and you think you're doing the right thing by telling him to man up. You're trying to give him that tough love. But once again, feminine women in their relationship, we don't give tough love to our men. Sometimes we give tough love to our sons, but we don't give it to our men. We give them warm, nurturing encouragement as our men, as our husbands. We do not tell them to man up because what you're implying is that he's not being manly in that moment. He needs to man up. And that does something to a man's pride, to a man's ego. And it signals in his mind that you look at him as if he is less than a man. And that's not what he needs from you. He needs reassurance that you know he's a man. You know he's having a vulnerable moment. You allow him that. You love him. And his tears, his vulnerability, his weakness does not take away from his manhood. That's what he needs to be reassured of from you. So refrain from saying the phrase man up because that implies you think he's less than a man. All right. So these were eight things you absolutely never say to a man. I have learned a lot being married for almost 19 years and together for almost 20 years. As women, sometimes our tongues are as sharp as swords and we have to be mindful to use our words, to use our feminine charm, to use our grace to encourage our men, to help them. And they're not perfect beings. But as women, as a channel called All Things Woman, I hold us to account in our actions and how we can treat our men so that we can continue to get that feminine behavior, that feminine treatment. And the only way we can get that is if we understand that men deserve respect. And even in moments where you feel like he deserves every ounce of venom you spew at him, that is not the time for you to speak that way. Try to have a little control over your emotions and express yourself in a feminine, gracious way. Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, Put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.